Okay, I am back. Um, we are going to talk now a little bit about resume writing um, and what a resume should look like. You've had some good information here about interviewing and what you should wear and the actual job search, but you have to have your resume um, ready to go and be confident with that you're selling yourself properly. Usually at this point in the resume, I would make you stand up and do a Superman or Superwoman pose <laughs> um, to get your confidence going. So we have to be confident when we're selling ourselves. And how do we do that? And again, it's talking to your family and friends and talking to people on what you're good at to create that to put onto your resume. So your resume is a personal representative um, of yourself. Um, they need to make a picture of you when the people are actually, the employers are reading that resume, they're picturing you. They're wondering, do I want this person working at my location? So your resume has a job to do and it has about 8 to 15 seconds to do it um, before it goes in the no pile or the maybe pile. So being younger, um, you want to probably have just a one pager um, because you need to catch their attention on that first grab. So you need to, to make a positive first impression, um, attract the employer's attention, uh, make an impact on your behalf and intrigue the employer enough to give you that interview. Something has to catch their eye that they're going to give you that call and then you need to survive elimination. You need to get past that point of just the review that you get the phone call. So there are four types or main types of resumes. There's your traditional chronological resume that basically is I worked here from this date to this date and then um, your job description underneath each employer. A skill-based resume uh, or a functional resume and at the age that you, you guys are at right now, this is probably your best bet to do a skill-based resume because you can talk about the skills you have um, that maybe you learnt babysitting or maybe you learnt um, mowing lawns or painting fences or different things like that may not necessarily be from an actual job, which is okay. There's still skills that you have learnt over the years. There's a combination or a hybrid, hybrid resume, um, which is a combination of both, the chronological and your skill-based. And then there's your CV. So CV, that would be down the road for you when you become a doctor or a lawyer or get your master's. So choose wisely. So as we said, there's your chronological, your hybrid, your functional. What is going to work for you the best? Um, again, that functional or skill-based is good for entry-level positions because you can focus on the skills you have and not necessarily where you've worked. So resume breakdown. Um, some of this is my opinion as I read resumes a lot. Uh, but of course your name is at the top of the resume with your contact information. I really think we can get away from putting your physical address down. That you do not, people do not need to know where you live. Things have changed, the world has changed, they do not need to know um, that you're at 15 Darlington Drive or you know, whatever that is. So you can just put Sherwood Park, your phone number, cell number if you have a landline um, as well and an email contact. Highlights of qualifications, you want three to five points that highlight your skills as it pertains to what job you're applying to. So it could be training, education, per, like some different certificates that you have, maybe the years of experience, um, maybe you speak two languages, maybe you have good computer skills, whatever that looks like. You want to pick some of those highlights and, and pop them in at the top of your resume. When you are um, applying to a job, you should change your resume every single time, okay, for each job that you're applying to. This is a job description 
for Judy's office supply, which is a traditional pretty basic job description. In the green, as you can see here, these are the things that you need to put onto your resume for this job, okay? You want to, if you have that experience, you want to use those same words, okay? You want to talk about that you have, you're friendly and you have good customer service, you have an eye for detail, um, that you enjoy working in a friendly and respectful environment. You want to have all those kind of words. Because I wrote this advertisement, not really, but if this was for my workplace, I wrote this advertisement. So if you put these same words into um, your job, into your resume, they're going to pop into my head because I'm going to say, those are my words. I like this person. I'm going to give them a call. So it's really good to pull those different qualifications and add them to your resume each time, okay? And make a, just a few little changes. When you are doing your resume, again, the breakdown, you want to add your education and certificates. So maybe you're in grade 11 or you finished school, where, the year, maybe if you um, focused on anything at school, you want to list that information. So this is a chronological or a breakdown for chronological, and I was going to change it, but it just gave me an opportunity to talk about it. Here we have listed company name, location, job title. My personal opinion is you should have your job title first highlighted, and then where you worked, it's not as important, right? Where you actually did the job isn't as important. You can do it anywhere. If you worked at Staples, you can probably go work at any store, right? It doesn't matter where you worked, you take the skills you got from that job. Um, and again, you want to list a few things under each job. So transferable skills. This is where you guys are going to make or break your resume. Transferable skills are the things that you, or the skills that you're going to develop through school, volunteering, maybe work experience. Um, and it's stuff that you can transfer from job to job. So like I said, you may have learnt how to water plants. Maybe your mother gardens and you water plants. Can you not go to Greenland Garden Center and water plants there? It's a skill you have. So you can spice it up a little bit on your resume by saying you have landscaping or, <laughs> or um, gardening, you know, type experience. Um, but it's, not, it's something, nothing that someone can take away from you because you know how to do it. So those are your transferable skills. Um, there's hard skills and soft skills. So hard skills are stuff like first aid, uh, maybe a computer course, um, money handling. Those are things you actually had to learn how to do. Your soft skills are more like your personality. So it is your communication skills, maybe your creative, um, that you have leadership skills. Those are your soft skills that you want to add. The more transferable skills you have, the more invaluable you are to an employer because you can work in a lot of different areas. So again, a little bit more in transferable skills. So your hard skills, like we said, it's stuff you have learned through school um, or different jobs that someone taught you. And again, soft skills could be empathy, flexibility, that type of thing. So both are super important. Um, you want to have a good balance of both on your resume. So here, and we probably cannot see, well, maybe we can, it's not too bad. But here's some examples of some transferable skills. So speaking effectively, multitasking, cooperating, just trying to, attending, you know, attention to detail, organized, coaching. Maybe you've coached a ball team or a hockey team. Um, those are skills you can use, those leadership skills. So just looking at this example, so this lady, she's never had a job before. Um, she just graduated from a business admin program um, with university. Um, she has spent three summers babysitting her three nieces and nephews. These are my favorite resumes to do, to be able to pull those, that information. This lady has all kinds of multitasking skills, 
from babysitting three kids for a lot of years. She has good planning skills. She has the ability to create, like be creative with planning, playtime. Um, so there's a lot of different skills that you, she learned from babysitting and that responsibility that she can put onto her resume, but as well can use whatever she learned at school um, in that business administration program. Um, another one, Kelly, remember this lady, she's been a stay-at-home mom for four years and she worked in customer service. Just because her experience was four years ago does not mean she shouldn't put it on her resume. We don't forget. We don't forget how to do these jobs. Um, it's still experience you have to, to go to a new job. So power statements. So sometimes, and it's hard when we are doing resumes, um, to think of creative ways to talk about our experience. But looking at these examples, so helped customers place orders. Maybe you worked at a restaurant. Did you help customers place orders or did you provide, provide excellent customer service to a variety of clients, assisting customers with placing product orders accurately, right? You can really stretch, you know, and pump up and make power statements out of that. Did you cook and serve food or you prepared a variety of dishes to your customer's order? Did you handle cash or did you assist customers with a variety of transactions including cash, debit and credit card um, transit purchases? So I do have some power statements here too if anyone wants to pick those up that I use them every day when I use my cheat sheet when I'm doing someone's resume. Um, it just helps with us with ideas. Hot tips when you're doing your resume, again, do your research. You want to tailor your, your resume to each employer. Um, never lie on your resume. It will come back to bite you in the butt. If you have the skills or maybe not the education, apply anyway. You never know. You might be the only person that applied to that job. So you may at least get the interview for that practice. Apply. Proofread. Proofread, proofread, proofread your resume. Have someone else look it over. Um, one spelling error, I used to work alongside a lady who, she had this big red pen and if there was spelling or errors, she was circling them um, and your resume ended up in the garbage. Um, so make sure you have someone double checking. So when you're formatting your resume, um, use a neutral font, nothing too wild and crazy for your fonts. Arial, Times New Roman are good. Um, nothing too small because you might get someone old like me and I can't see. So you want to have it, you know, a 12, 11, 12, something like that. Um, try and keep it no longer than two pages. Um, you want to have something to talk about in the interview. A little bit in your cover letter, um, but resumes right now especially there's so much, um, you know, so many people applying to the same jobs or, you know, the, the employers aren't reading. They don't get past your second page you, or for your first page sometimes. So try and keep it, you know, quick. Um, have a nice balance of white and black space, right? Not have it all jammed in close. Um, use bulleted lists that allow for easy reading. Align your headings. Um, put your name and phone number on all the pages. Um, so if you have a second page, put your name up top because if it gets separated on my messy desk then I can staple it, or it's not stapled, I can find it. Um, use standard letter paper. They talk a lot, sometimes people like to put different colors um, on their resume. We print in black and white. When I'm printing it, it might, you know, when it pops up, I might see it in color, but I'm printing it in black and white, so putting colors isn't really necessary. Um, you never, not on this, maybe it's on the next page, but don't put your picture on your resume. Um, if a resume shows up with a picture, I have to call you and say, take your picture off and, and send it again because I can't, again, Alberta labor laws, I can't judge you on your picture because you could come back and say, you didn't hire me because I'm blonde, that I'm, you know, whatever. So take your picture off. We can't judge you on that. Unless you're a model, then maybe that's important. 
Um, make sure your copies of your resumes are clean, um, not folded in three, you know, little squares. Again, try not to have any grammar or spelling. Um, I think I heard one of the ladies talk about it earlier, but sending the wrong resume. Um, or sending, a lot of times we'll put on our resumes, you know, um, attention ATB. And then you're sending it to TD because you're applying to all the banks, right? Um, your resume just went in the garbage because you have no attention to detail and you, are, you, you're just hitting send, 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 right? It, so make sure you're tailoring it to the right employer. Um, again, not too long or too short of a resume, not using your action words. And I have a whole list of different action words to use. Um, an inconsistent layout. I had a lady once send me her resume and I think she had five different fonts and different colors and different um, like sizing and I think she was trying to show me that she knew how to change it <laughs> but it looked terrible so do not try and use it use one and that's it and having incorrect contact information make sure your phone number is correct make sure your email is correct um, so when we are reaching out um, that we can get a hold of you so I think that's kind of the the end of it. This one's short. Usually we would actually sit down and do your resume at this point. Um, if you do have a resume and you want me to take a look at it, I'm just over here. I'm more than welcome. And we do have some handouts, some samples of, of resumes of the skill-based resume that you could take a look at as well in the power statements. So any questions? Anyone? No? Well, thank you guys again for listening.